Hi, and welcome back to another episode of the Public Law right here on No Borders Radio. You can find us at TammyPepperman.org now. And I'm here, of course, with co-host Bo. How are you, Bo? Good. Hello, everybody. How are you? Hopefully, everybody's well out there. And uh, I just caught the tail end there of uh, you on uh, Clint's show, Corporation Nation. That's pretty good. I had so much fun. I always enjoy the show with Clint. Yeah, you're hitting um, all the good stuff there. The, uh, oh, Treaty of West Valley, yeah, I think you ended up on. And, oh, man, you just took them full circle with the definition of independence. And, oh, from what I caught, it was a really good show, so I'll have to go back and listen to it on the archives here yeah, corporation nation and then i'll have it up uh as soon as i am notified then i'll have it up too and and put it on tammypepperman.org all right so uh so you pretty uh burnt out are you or it's the uh <laughs> throat is kind of sore i'm gonna get some uh water here and, and uh, using facilities. You got anything lined up? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I got to all kinds of stuff. We'll, uh... Awesome. I'll leave you to it for about the next couple minutes. Okay. Well, let's see. Of course, uh... The actor who plays Mini-Me was stopped by uh... TSA, uh, handled by TSA, I should say, and uh, let's see, we'll cover that, we'll cover uh, some Hillary Clinton stuff here, and we'll try to put things in perspective for those that are still voting within the system to try to facilitate change with that mechanism and uh, why it's ridiculous on its face we talk about the doctrine of election here and it says you can basically choose one or the other alright what they're talking about it doesn't matter what you're voting for on the ticket there if it's a red party, blue party, the tea party all these parties are parties of con Congress, which, as you laid out in the uh, show with Clint, and we've laid out so many times before in the past, that the word Congress means with transgression. So it doesn't matter what kind of mask your transgressor has on, it's still... A Congress critter, uh, your transgressor. So uh, that's why voting uh, within this Confederacy, which is a criminal enterprise, is ridiculous on its face. I'm sorry, it's just the way it is. Uh, now there are things you can elect to do like be your own government and that's what we've chosen to do here and there's also a requirement to sue the federal state as a, a sovereign state that we divest all these things title things that are keeping us bound within the lower Chambers of the Exchequer, which is hell, as a debt slave. All right. You know, if you're patronizing the system as in filing complaints, going into court and pleading as a pro se, pro per, sui juris, all this, all this stuff is uh, is actually patronizing them and giving it power over you. Okay. Uh, be 
get some stories pulled up here and we'll see how things are playing out as a result of the agreed entry that was what come out of our case against the federal state in which we swapped the thing being held in the holding corporation which had always been human beings since 1929 with the attorney which is a fiction it has a fictitious government called the bar it pledges an oath to that fictitious government okay from all the evidence that it presents it's a fiction so it's never lawful in its face to hold human beings as surety for the debt in holding companies as a prisoner of war under the 1929 Geneva Convention we evidence this stuff was occurring and we threw in the agreed entry after the correct you know uh, lead up into that into the court records there as it, was, as it was still presented in the United States District Court now since we have gotten through this you know by the evidence we condemned all those courts because those courts have judges that are not adhering to judicial canon for a judge to be a judge it has to evidence itself as only ruling on the evidence if you look at all the court cases out there and look what these so-called judges do they don't do that. No. They uh, facilitate their actions based on attorney work product doctrine. Okay, if you come in there as a pro se, uh, claiming to be sovereign or what have you, okay, well, the judge isn't telling you this, but they're administrating you as per the law of infants because you're evidencing yourself as to be of dual mind okay because here you are pleading in their courts and then pleading to be sovereign at the same time it's a dual mind all right if you go into their courts at all that were created under the 1789 Judiciary Act their places of business if you go in there, you're a commercial unit, and they're going to use you to offset congressional bankruptcy by converting converting you into a negotiable instrument and then through the judge's oath, discharging his duties, he is using you to offset their congress congressional bankruptcy. So... I know this stuff it sounds it sounds crazy it sounded crazy to me at first okay but then you got to get into all the background information where this comes from and it comes from uh, all their constitutions the articles of confederation going back before all of that there was the charters of the 1600s there was uh, before that, of course, there was uh, the Coronation Charter of 1180, Charter of Liberties, uh, and it's, it's like one long congressional action, you know, back in the Gellenhausen Charter, they said in the first paragraph, they said, well, we can go ahead and tell you all this stuff here because you're just going to forget about it. The uh, memories of the sheeple are very short. So, therefore, we're going to give you disclosure right here and now. And we're going to do all this stuff to you. But you're just going to forget about it. And all the sheeple said, <laughs> Like good sheeple slash seals. All right, so yeah, I'll, I'll read through this one again here. I guess just getting into the news here. Get into some, uh, after going through that brief 
background as to what the public law is all about. And essentially, it is to do no harm. It's not a codified law form under the Negotiable Instruments Act or the uh, Bills and Notes as it's listed in Amjur Second Edition where all the other courts basically created. Uh, Alright, so Mini-Me. Austin Powers Mini-Me gets special attention from TSA and essentially uh, yeah, it's at the RT Russia Today from this was on June 16th. Even Hollywood stars have a hard time escaping the wrath of the Transportation Security Administration. This time, Austin Powers actor Vern Troyer was the latest to endure a humiliating TSA pat-down. The barely two-and-a-half feet tall mini-me actor was attempting to board a flight out of Los Angeles International Airport over the weekend when he became the subject of a TSA search. Luckily, his manager Ray Hughes was on hand and was able to snap photographic evidence that has since surfaced to the web and gone viral. It was absolutely disgusting. I saw the pictures that his manager had taken, and he's being molested. Let's just cut to the chase here. He's being molested at this time. And within cognitive dissonance, of course, later on he laughed about it because that's the expected result of being molested by those who you feel are supposed to be protecting you but he the pictures speak for themselves this is awful yeah and they they talk about some of the other actors that had gone uh, through the same turmoil the guy who played Chewbacca you know the tall guy he had a cane it was uh, crafted to look like a lightsaber and this is going back a little over a year ago, I believe, as the story says, and, and uh, they didn't like that either. So I gave him a hard time about his cane. And uh, well, it's under they the haven't accident. caught one terrorist yet. No, and is, 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 is the whole thing about it. But the thing is, is that, you know, two years ago, and this is going back to the Gelm Housing Charter again. Two years ago. The CIA came out in the mainstream media and said, look, we are the underwear bomber. We are the production company. I'm giving you disclosure here. You were still allowing the TSA to exist. You were still funding it. You were still buying into the fear porn that's offered to you through the television programming. And so you still have this thing over you without any evidence ever, ever of a threat other than what was posed by the CIA, the production company for the United States Incorporated. That's right. That's right, but the people just keep buying it hook, line, and sinker. And the way they present it and ram it down the throats of people on the media that uh, the BBG Broadcasting Board of Governors has oversight over globally you know people just uh, <laughs> you know they don't see the pattern here it's the problem reaction solution the FBI said it's the one that puts porn on people's computers and porns on their phone child porn in order to catch them out the FBI came out the same year that the CIA came out with their uh, disclosure of being the underwear bomber and the FBI said look we're the Muslim terrorists we infiltrate groups and organizations of religious beliefs or whatever and we perpetrate these things we are the extremists we are providing you a presentation in order to put you into fear and then it stops there and allows you to go on and keep maintaining those concepts that your brother is your enemy yeah there was a video uh, a whole lot of Glenn calls the station Hell Wars on YouTube uh, talked about uh, how the top of this ISIS organization is uh, bankers CIA well right but on the surface they can be traced to uh, executives of these uh, banks right that's who's directing policy since 1933 it's under corporate governance 
1929 Geneva Convention said that if you ever lose your government, the corporations will be happy to come in and pick you up as prisoners of war and put you in holding corporations for your safety. So now they're putting on this big uh, ISIS production over there in Iraq to garner the consent of all the sheep once again. It's not working uh, for the American people. They've had it with these wars. They had it with the Iraq war already. And, uh, then they need to rise up and stop patronizing this thing because that thing is killing your brothers and sisters. It killed 1,500 Syrian babies alone last fall through those gas attacks. That was the CIA. That was Congress. Yeah, going back to what I said at the top of the hour, in this whole mechanism created uh, to garner your consent called voting, uh, voting's not the answer. No. I mean, you're consenting no matter what you're voting for when you vote in their system. You have to hold the murderer accountable this time. If you're entertained by Jesus being on the cross, and you're not holding Barabbas, the murderer, accountable, Jesus continues to be crucified. But if you hold Barabbas, the murderer, accountable, Barabbas, the etymology means son of the master. That's an attorney that worships Congress. That's who Barabbas is. The murderer. Start holding the murderer accountable and stop being entertained by the crucifixion of Jesus. Which means your earth in Greek and Latin. Yes. So, maybe to illustrate, you know, what kind of people run this mechanism. All right, uh got a story here from the Daily Beast exclusive Hillary Clinton took me through hell rape victim says the woman at the center of a scandal over Hillary Clinton's defense of an alleged child rapist speaks out in depth for the first time Hillary Clinton is known as the champion of women and girls but one woman who says she was raped as a 12 year old in Arkansas doesn't think Hillary deserves that honor this woman says Hillary smeared her and used dishonest tactics to successfully get her attacker off with a light sentence, even though she claims Clinton knew he was guilty. That's the function of an attorney. Of course, Hillary wasn't an attorney. And then after that, is an attorney. She, right, and then after that, she was a secretary of state, which is a clearinghouse for the attorneys. So that she's cashing in on both ends of all diagnosis rape victims the criminal aspect she's cashing in by putting that guy in prison she's cashing in by victimizing that victim female over and over and over again through the actions of hearts and minds she was pretending that she was giving this woman a service she didn't give her any service she preyed on her and allowed bankers to cash in on the prostitution of that female the victim in the 1975 sexual abuse case that became Clinton's first criminal defense case as a 27-year-old lawyer has only spoken to the media once since her attack, a contested short interaction with a reporter in 2008 during Clinton's last presidential campaign run. Now 52, she wants to speak out after hearing Clinton talk about her case on newly discovered audio recordings from the 1980s unearthed by the Washington Free Beacon and made public this week. In a long emotional interview with the Daily Beast, she accused Clinton of intentionally lying about her court documents, going to extraordinary lengths to discredit evidence of the rape, and later callously acknowledging and laughing about her attacker's guilt on the recordings. Hillary Clinton took me through hell, the victim said. The Daily Beast agreed to withhold her name out of concern for her privacy as a victim of sexual assault. That's just sick. The victim said if she saw Clinton today, she would call her out for what she sees as hypocrisy of Clinton's current campaign to fight for women's rights compared to her actions regarding this rape case so long ago. Okay. Uh... Let's see you. I I would say to Clinton, you took a case of mine in '75. You lied on me 
I realize the truth now, the heart of what you've done to me, and you are supposed to be for women? You call that being for women? What you've done to me, and I hear you on tape laughing? The victim's allegation that Clinton smeared her following her rape is based on a May 1975 court affidavit written by Clinton on behalf of Thomas Alfred Taylor, one of the two alleged attackers, whom Clinton agreed to defend after being asked by the prosecutor. Taylor has specifically requested a female attorney. I have been informed that the complaint is emotionally unstable with the tendency to seek out older men and, and, and engage in fantasizing. Clinton then named Hillary D. Rod, Rodham, wrote in the affidavit. I also have been informed that she has in the past made false accusations about persons claiming they had attacked her body. Also, that she exhibits an unusual stubbornness and temper, and temper when she does not get her way. <laughs> Yes, as we know by the uh, body bag count from the uh, Benghazi attack. Yeah, Benghazi and uh, scandal through Arkansas early, early on. Uh, but let's see. Uh, Clinton also wrote that a child psychologist told her that. Children early adolescents tend to exaggerate or romanticize sexual experiences, especially when they come out when they come from disorganized families, such as the complainant. Yeah, and she's the one that's teaching this stuff to the citizenry by her court action, which is what I was reading last week on um, the news uh, audio that we did. This is how it envelops. Now, she brought up, quote, expert opinion. No, she was reading from a book and she said this is how this type of individual reacts or behaves. But she was trying to reference this victim female and this is how they get one over on all of society by the use of these tongues. She's absolutely horrifying. The victim vigorously denied Clinton's accusations and said there has never been any explanation of what Clinton was referring to in that affidavit. She claims she never accused anyone of attacking her before her rape. I've never said that about anyone. I don't know why she said that. I have never made false allegations. I know she was lying, she said. I definitely didn't see older men. I don't know why Hillary put that in there, and it makes me plumb mad. Because she's a child predator. Hillary Clinton at that time with her affidavit was preying on that victim female child. That's how the attorney makes money. The victim's second main grievance with Clinton stems from the newly released audio recordings which were taped in a series of interviews of Clinton with Arkansas reporter Roy Reed, who was researching an article on the Clintons that was ultimately never published. The Free Beacon found the tapes archived at the University of Arkansas in Fayetteville amidst thousands of pieces of Clinton history that are being periodically released for public consumption. On the tapes, Clinton, who speaks in a southern drawl, appears to acknowledge that she was aware of her client's guilt, brags about successfully getting the only piece of physical evidence thrown out of court, and laughs about it, all whimsically. Using that is the use of attorney work product doctrine. Evidence is evidence. And when an attorney takes that off of the court record in order to prey on children, that attorney should be arrested immediately. Immediately. She's a predator. Yeah, well, they, they all are. That's all they do. That's all this thing called government does is prey on all of us. Right. Uh, he took a lie detector test. I had him take a polygraph, which he passed, which forever destroyed my faith in polygraphs, Clinton says on the recording, failing to hold back some chuckles. She then describes how she discovered that investigators had cut out and lost a section of the suspect's underwear that they said contained the victim's blood. Clinton brought the remaining underwear segment to a Nobel Prize winning blood expert in Brooklyn, New York, she explained, in order to convince him to lend his heavyweight reputation 
and influence to her defense case. And so, the, the sort of the story goes, uh, let's see, the sort of the story through the grapevine was, if you get him interested in the case, then you know you had the foremost expert in the world willing to testify so that it came out the way you wanted it to come out, Clinton said. Yes, that is the use of attorney work product doctrine. Her ability to take stuff off the record and put stuff on the record that never existed. She was going to use an expert on probably that wrote a book or whatever to exemplify the same thing that she said earlier about reading a book and, and coming up with a characterization. She's diagnosing that victim, and in such, she's moving everything the way she wants everything to come out. That's what an attorney does. This is a use of Delphi, consensus reality. It's a war tactic. Right, and the attorneys have been raging, waging war on us Throughout history, once upon a time, there was a group of attorneys that called themselves the Founding Fathers, and through uh, garnered consent, uh, became the uh, ruling oligarchs of the uh, Americas circa 1776. Right. That's it in a nutshell. Uh, Clinton told the judge that the famous expert was willing to testify instead of the original charge of first-degree rape. The prosecutors let Taylor plead to a lesser charge, unlawful fondling of a child. According to the Free Beacon, Taylor was sentenced to one year behind bars with two months reduced for time served. The second attacker was never charged. Oh, he plea bargained, got him off with time served in the county jail. He'd been in the county jail about two months, Clinton said on the recording, apparently not remembering the sentence accurately. For the victim, the tapes proved that while Clinton was arguing in the affidavit that the victim could have some culpability in her own attack, she actually believed that her client was guilty. Taylor's light sentence was a miscarriage of justice, the victim said. Absolutely, because that was all in the schematic of tricking children out. Hillary Clinton not only preyed on that child, she ensured that the predator who they had arrested to play catch and release what with would be let out so he can prey on other children. That's the game. Instead of removing the harm from humanity and getting rid of that rapist, Hillary Clinton defended him and made sure they had a really light sentence so he could go out and do it again. It's good product. It's good for uh, economics. Right. For them. Good for politics. Politically correct. Goes on to say, it's a proven fact with all the tapes now revealed, she lied like a dog on me. I think she was trying to do whatever she could to make herself look good at the time. She wanted to look good. She didn't care if those guys did or not, if they did it or not, she said. Them two guys should have got a lot longer time. I do not think justice was served at all. The Office of Hillary Clinton did not respond to a request for comment. In a 2008 article in Newsday written by Glenn Thrush, now at Politico, Clinton spokesperson Howard Wolfson defended her conduct in the case. As she wrote in her book, Living History, Senator Clinton was appointed by the Circuit Court of Washington County, Arkansas, to represent Mr. Taylor in this matter, he said. As an attorney and an officer of the court, she had an ethical and legal obligation to defend him, to the fullest extent of the law, to act otherwise would have constituted a breach of professional responsibilities. Yeah, you're supposed to be really good pimps. That's what it said. She was a really good pimp. Uh, yeah, so it's a really long article here. A couple uh, side note comments here highlighted. Uh, I guess could read those. If she becomes president, is she going to be telling the world the truth? No. None of them do, anyways. It's not just her. Uh, she, uh, yeah. Well, we're almost to the end of it, but, uh, you know, essentially, yeah, 12-year-old 12, 12 girl gets raped, and then Hillary Clinton 
defends the two guys that did it, and uh, she's such a good attorney. Uh, she gets them off with the uh, uh, light to no sentence. She made sure that they would prey on other children after that, as well as cashing in on this child's uh, diagnoses. That was her function. Her function was never ever to do anything but take a child through the legal process as a prostitute at the behest of Congress, according to the uh, Judiciary Act 28 U.S.C. subsection 453 and the judicial oath to discharge congressional bankruptcy. Yeah, she goes on to say in here, I'm a little scared of her uh, when, when this all comes about. I'm a little worried she might try to hurt me. I hope not, she said. You can lie all they want, say all they want, but I know it's true. Yeah, yeah, we should all be afraid of all these, these, uh, predators, rascals running everything through attorney work product doctrine because it's been evidence throughout our case that they do nothing but prey on us, uh, you know, including and foremost human trafficking and genocide, all in their own words. Right, and the action of genocide is exemplified and evidenced in that case itself. The judiciary and the attorneys have targeted a group of the population called children. That group is called children. And the genocide against them is in the use of children through the legal process to make attorneys money as pimps. When a banker comes in or a judge comes in, which is a banker, and charges a predator for the use of a child's body, that is prostitution. It's all financial. It has nothing to do with protecting children. It has nothing to do with protecting humanity and everything to do with banking. The court itself is defined in Black's Law Dictionary as a bank. So how's that working out for everybody? Like that? You like that form of governance? Keep voting for it. Okay. Well, of course, I'm being facetious. We advocate here adherence to the public law, which means do no harm. But also, on the other side, says to come in as a sovereign state and hold them accountable as per the restrictive principle of sovereign immunity, which says that if you harm a human being, you don't have any immunity. Or sovereignty. Or sovereignty, right. And that's what these, you know, the United States Incorporated has always claimed to be a sovereign state. But oh, they are anything but. That case alone evidences that they are a foreign state because Hillary Clinton, as an attorney for the court, is facilitating acts of commerce and private acts. That is what the negotiorum gestio is. The attorney in Black's Law Dictionary is defined as a negotiorum gestor. It's the one that negotiates that instrument. So, the president is like the negotiorum gestor in chief. Right. All it is is a presentation. All the world is a stage. Yeah. And the television programming, the educational programming, all of that is designed to create product. It's the Lord God creating man in its own image. And that's all it's ever been. They educate you to be what they want you to be, teach you to be these things so that you defend these fictional titles. That is what allows them to still be declaring you dead under the Declaration of Independence. It settles on there, you're all dual-minded and in a pending state. You're dead. They're holding on to your estates for you. And this is how they care for human beings. They trick them out like Hillary Clinton did, that little girl, a little girl that was preyed on by Hillary Clinton. Yeah, and she did, she did such a good job that the powers that be made sure that she got into... Uh, the Secretary of State position at one time. Which is the clearinghouse. That's the one that clears the books on congressional bankruptcy. She earned her way to the Secretary of State by human trafficking. 
and perpetrating genocide against children and men and women, whatever other titles people take up. So, in another story here at KFOR.com, video vigilante exposing metro prostitution asks why local attorney is not charged. And there are several videos here. Well, I thought that was so interesting because the same day that this is coming out, and the attorney's been under, quote, investigation forever. He's never been charged. However, a sheriff was recently outed out of a community because they claimed that he was involved in prostitution. And remember, the reason that the federal state is charging um, other beings with prostitution, like a sheriff, is because the federal state is saying, you are undercutting me. That is my thing. I own that product. Under 27 CFR, it says anything in violation of the revenue laws. That means that Congress is saying, hey, I'm the only one that can prostitute and hook you out. And if you do it to each other and you cash in on each other's bodies or you cash in on your own body, I'm going to charge you for that because that's mine. I get to prostitute. I get to be the pimp. That's what it says in 27 CFR 72.11. It also says that Congress is the only one that can grow pot. And kidnap people. Yeah, and tell you that uh, you don't own your own body. Uh, you can't uh, just have anything you want that comes out of the earth. Uh, you know, who do you think you are? You elected us. That's Thank you very disgusting. much. It's just absolutely disgusting that people are still patronizing this thing. It's scary. So over uh, at... Uh, this uh, story on News Channel 4, Oklahoma City, a metro attorney allegedly caught soliciting a prostitute for sex more than a year ago is still not facing any charges. William Nixon of Love, Beale and Nixon, must be his law firm, was arrested in May of 2013 along with six others. Nixon allegedly responded to an ad set up by Oklahoma City Vice offering sex at local hotel. Oklahoma Bureau of, Narco of Narcotics became involved after allegations of human trafficking surfaced. A local activist website revealing men who solicit for sex files do not let this matter be swept under the rug. The self-proclaiming video vigilante Brian Bates of JohnTV.com allows the results of this sting and or follows the results of this sting and many others. This is not a difficult case. It's not a hard case to prosecute, says Bates. There's no reason why a year and a few months later he has still not been charged. One by one, every suspect was charged except for Nixon. News Channel 4 uh, stopped by Love, Beal, and Nixon, but was told Nixon is out of town. There's an awful lot of lip service going on regarding this case, says Bates. I don't know why. None of it smells right. After years of work, Bates says he's noticed a disturbing pattern. Blind justice does not exist in Oklahoma uh, County, says Bates, if you're an attorney. If you're wealthy, if you're someone that is well known in the community, there is a real good chance you're never going to be criminally charged, and that isn't fair. They can, they can come up with whatever excuses they want, but I track all of these cases and you don't see the blue-collar worker who made a mistake having his charges go away. Nixon's charge packet has been back and forth between the Oklahoma Bureau of Narcotics and the District Attorney David Pratter's office. Bates says he's been told different things many different times and just wants an answer. Initially, I was told he'd be charged within 10 days, says Bates. Then I was told he'd be charged within the, end of the month. Then I was told that the charges were imminent. It's been 14 months after he was arrested, and the charges, charges uh, haven't been filed. With the back and forth aside, Bates says this case sends a bigger message. Under the eyes of the law in Oklahoma County, we're not all equal. And I would extend that out to the globe, actually. But that's what Bates said. It's nice it, to see others standing up. If you live in a nicer house, if you have a nicer job, 
like an attorney, I guess. Uh, if you have better connections with the city, you're not going to be held to the same standards that everybody else is. Oklahoma Bureau of Narcotics says all seven charge packets were handed to the district attorney's office at the same time, but Nixon's needed extra work. It's now back in the hands of OBN, and the DA's office is still waiting. The spokesman with OBN says the charges are imminent, and the district attorney should be setting, uh, seeing them any day now. Yeah. Yeah, it depends on how much media surrounds that attorney. If uh, the sheeple don't see it and they don't start raising heck, they won't charge the attorney. But if the sheeple see it and they start raising heck, that's when the uh, the shit hits the fan, for lack of another word. They're waiting for sheeple reaction. They want to know if you're going to still patronize this thing or if you're going to hold the murderers accountable this time. This is your test. Now, yeah, the reason I extend this out globally is because we see, see the same things across the globe. There's, you know, all kinds of divisions they create, specializing people, uh, especially within the realm of government. You know, but you see this on, uh, you know, the other levels as well. Like you see what's happening to, you know, the poor Palestinians over there in Israel. The attorneys are slaughtering them left and right. It's just disgusting. We've got to stop this. Yeah, everybody wants to say it's Israel, Israel, Israel. Well, Israel was created through congressional action in 1948. Yes. Okay. The Israeli citizen is just like the American citizen. It's just like every other citizen. This is the CIA on the ground scaring you against each other. Netanyahu is clergy for Congress. This is a... Obama just is is Putin, uh, Putin uh, Stalin, Hitler, Assad, right? Okay, and it goes on and on. These these leaders across the world uh, are all uh, clergy for Congress under that 1941 Atlantic Charter, where this uh, global governance was set up to um, banking, and the banking being on uh, banking of human beings. In the act of human trafficking. Genocide, too. So. And it's always genocide because it's a psychopath coming up against humanity. The psychopath is not the same race as a human being. The human being is the evolved species. The frontal lobe is an evolutionary trait. That's what they talk about when they're talking about racial cleansing. They're killing off humanity, and they're leaving the psychopath. The 1924 um, Congressional Act of Racial Integrity out of Virginia, you should read that. Everybody should read that. Go back and read about the eugenics programs. It's targeting humanity. It's not just targeting black, white, red, yellow, Christian, Jew, Muslim, Catholic, uh, female, male, child. Racial cleansing refers to the human race. The psychopath is not the human race. Now, over in uh, Manila, what is it? Right. And I don't have the story pulled up oh, uh, yet. I apologize. But the uh, essentially, this is uh, regarding the Senate for uh, the Philippines. Right. And the president for the... Uh, Philippines. Philippines is trying to uh, basically run interference for the arrest of eight senators that were all charged uh, in uh, plunder. Yeah, plunder, financial plunder, plunder from the people, right. which is what they do all the time, anyways. Right, and they're they're trying to protect them. The attorneys are coming in. They have human rights attorneys that have come in, pretending that the attorney is human. Uh, pretending that these Senate members are human. None of them are human. They're all psychopaths. And what they're doing is they want to know the sheeple reaction in these cases. Um, they want to know the level of indoctrination that you experience. They want to know if you're buying into this stuff. If you're not buying into this stuff, you need to indicate such. Comment on one of the, the news feeds. Uh, 
you know, tweet it, uh, put it on your Facebook. Instead of playing Farmville or whatever, go read and comment on these articles. They want to know what you think. And this is relative to Matthew 27. This is the crucifixion of Christ. You are being given a choice right now. What we did was we came in and we sued Congress. So we opened up this can of worms. And we said, no more crucifying Christ. Now our obligation was to reach as many as we could during the time we had the case going on with Congress. Because it all comes down to the sheeple behavior and reaction as you see your brother Jesus crucified or as you see Barabbas entertaining you and you keeping that attorney off the cross. Now it is up to all of the listeners to make that decision now. They're giving you a choice. And we need you now to choose your side, either or. You're either a child of the Lord God or you're a child of God. Well, let's see. How about a little joke to take the uh, edge off of it here? Uh, kind of relates anyways. Uh, an old pastor lay dying. He sent a message for an internal revenue service agent and his lawyer to come to the hospital. When they arrived, they were ushered up to his room. As they entered the room, the pastor held out his hands and motioned for them to sit on each side of the bed. The pastor grasped their hands, uh, sighed contently, smiled, and stared at the ceiling. For a time, no one said anything. Both the IRS agent and the lawyer were touched and flattered by the, the uh, old man uh, that he would ask them you know, to be with him during his final moments. They were also puzzled because the pastor had never given any indication that he particularly liked either one of them. Finally, the lawyer asked, Pastor, why did you ask the two of us to come here? And the pastor uh, mustered all of his strength, and he said weakly, Jesus died between two thieves, and that's how I'd like to go. Yeah, the priest is saying that he's relative to Jesus. He's just <laughs> as bad as the I know, two. that's a twisted, <laughs> twisted joke there, I guess. He's just as bad as the other two. It was kind of cute. So. It is. I'm sorry. I'm not in a humorous mood. It's been a really long week. I heard your joke. I'm sorry. No, no, but yeah, that's wrong on his face. You know, the pastor comparing so Jesus. So yeah, we're doing commentary on jokes now, folks. I guess is our new thing. <laughs> we're gonna point out the uh, in, in discrepancies in jokes here. Human conditioning. That's what comedy is used for. It's used to condition the human mindset. Right. The pastor's okay. You know. System, just those attorneys, and anyways, yeah. Uh, we see in reality, we see priests and scribes are getting uh, nailed left and right for uh, pedophilia, all the rest of it. Um, there also seems to be a major connection with all the pedophile cases coming out um, from Scotland Yard there. Um, and that big case going down where um, uh, everybody on the uh, suspects list are all Freemasons. Right. And we've been watching that, and it's so beautiful to see. You know, we've been uh, with our shows in Scotland and finally Ireland as well when Tierna Sewer joined with us. And, and it's getting the word out as to the public lot. And we're seeing all over the globe now. Um, the beauty of this thing, which is just amazing. Ireland, they came out and they're going after the um, another school. Uh, 500 bodies were found buried in the on the school grounds there, and um, you know these things are no longer going to be tolerated. It looks like they're not tolerating it, and that's what's the important part. Yeah, and this goes back uh, decades, right? Uh, how long does this been going on Forever. since the uh, 50s it, or that's one of the stages of genocide every time they kill us off at the very end they're putting our children into um, juvenile justice centers institutionalized states but the parents are being killed 
and called suicides, accidents, or whatever. And when they're done using these children's bodies, they just bury the children. It's terrifying, but everybody has to realize these things so that they can stop patronizing it. And uh, this one that we're talking about here now in Scotland, though, that involved, uh, allegedly, they were testing vaccines on the children that was killing them. That's been some of the rumor mill. I haven't found evidence of that. What I have found evidences of is that they were in institutionalized states. These are other, quote, Christian organizations, the same as they always do. And these children were there as, quote, wayward children at a reformatory of some kind. And it's the same uh, Boys and Girls Club International. All of these things are the same thing over and over again. Yeah, what we do know is that they found hundreds of skeletal remains of children in yeah. these facilities. Right, and and it's the same here. Are uh, the the United States Incorporated in Florida last year? There was 800 bodies laid on top of each other. Canada has been finding mass graves of children for years and years and years and years. But the sheeple have been ignoring these things. But these are evidences of mass genocides against the human race through the children. Yeah, and it just, and it just never ends. Um, big uh, story uh, making the rounds is about the IRS and the lowest learner emails that mysteriously disappeared and all. Oh, we lost them. We just... Of We've course. got these old TRS-80 computers, you know, we, just, we need we need more money, so we buy computers so this doesn't happen again in the future. Of course, and this is always What a bunch gonna, of... Yeah, they're all protecting each other. They don't want to take each other out, and somebody has more dirt on somebody else. It'll all play out, and we'll find out who has more dirt and who's the dirtiest politician by this little uh, uh, test uh, uh, trial by fire. That's what that's called. So if the sheeple don't tolerate this, it'll keep going forward. If you ignore it, they'll just sweep it under the table and nobody will ever be held accountable. Now this story came out here uh, just today that the IRS had a contract with an email backup company. Since uh, uh, it was with uh, Sonosoft since 2005. So these emails... They had a contract. That means that there was federal funds going out. Yeah. That doesn't mean they were using the funds for anything other than lavish parties and trips and whatever else they're, they've been doing behind the scenes while they tell the sheeple populace that they're doing something else. And, of course, the evidence is in where are the emails. They were doing something else with those monies. Otherwise, there would be evidence of emails that were backed up. And so you want to, as sheeple, go back on them since the creation of that new department, since the creation of the new uh, super fund that, that uh, the Senate Judiciary Committee is putting out. You need to hold them accountable for all those things and get your money back. Yeah, so evidently they, you know, the, the Sonosoft email backup services were... Uh, in this period of uh, the lowest learner lost emails, so you know again, if you can't scrub them off the old uh, failed hard drives, which data recovery systems do all the time, uh, then they should be right. retrievable at the uh, backup service. Yeah, they, now they have a new fall guy too. The backup service is going to be presented as a fall guy. Congress is going to say, oh, they're bad. They lost all of their documents. And the sheeple mines are turned all the way around from their original case in point. And that's what these games are all about. Now, if you stand at relativity and you say, hey, oh my gosh, you guys have been embezzling from me again through this mechanism, and you hold them accountable at that point. Don't be entertained by this Lewis Lerner stuff. The IRS is an internal revenue service. It generates revenue using you, the human being, as its product. So now you go back and you hold them accountable because this is sick. 
Look at that trickery. They told you back then that they needed funding to, to get some, some hardcore protection here to save all these emails, which is another aspect of concept creation. Privacy is a concept. So they've sold you all these concepts, and now look at how they're cashing in on them. That is sick. It's just absolutely perverted and twisted. Uh, yeah, let's see. Uh, and then, of course, uh, as they're hurting for funds, uh, there's a new plan that tax uh, U.S. citizens per mile that they drive. Uh, you know, they're just... They can't take your money fast enough these days. They're just obviously hemorrhaging quite badly for money. Hmm. I wonder why that could be. Um, let's see, could it be that they got their funding cut off from the IMF? Could be. Could it be that uh, they got cut off from the Treasury because they weren't protecting humanity? Could be. Um, so what are they running on? They're running on fumes and private donations and probably all that drug money that they're uh, garnering over there um, from Afghanistan to uh, the opium production, which uh, the soldiers are over there protecting. Um, Let's see here. What else we got going on? One World Trade Center half vacant, only owned by four companies. That's the. I guess that's the new One World Trade Center. Yeah, rented because it's a port authority, and then under the port authority is whoever is going to lease the other stuff that once belonged to the United States of being before they sold you all these concepts that uh, that location is owned by Congress because they said so and they put a fence up or they put a flag there or they built a building on it and said it was theirs I mean this is this is what they did folks this is the bottom line and you are listening to the public law as heard right here on TammyPepperman.org every Friday night, 10 to 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on No Borders mm. Radio. And I'm going to take us to break for a second real quick because we're at the top of the hour. And we'll be back in just a few minutes, folks. Stick around. Hi, and welcome back to the second hour of the Public Law right here at TammyPepperman.org on No Borders Radio. And, of course, we're simulcasting on Tiernasur at Tiernasur.com as well. And we thank everybody for these venues. So we're back. Yeah, that's right. And unlike the uh, corporate-funded radio stations uh, we bring the truth here uh, unlike for example I see that the BBC got nailed here for um, this uh, strike coverage fiasco campaigners are calling on the BBC to apologize for deliberately faking the events at or grieve to make it look as though the striking miners attacked the police when it was actually the other way around. Right, and that's what the CIA directs. CIA is a production company. It directs these intelligence productions and programs the listener or the viewer with artificial intelligence that are brought to you by none other than the United States Incorporated the owner of the CIA, the intelligence producer, as well as all civil media internationally, according to the BBG's.gov's website. And of course, uh, John Forbes Carey is on the Board of Gov Governors. He's also the clearinghouse for the United States Incorporated. So he's ensuring both ways that the human being will be the most efficient by controlling the media. Yeah, and of course we have uh, 
Oh, Feinstein, Diane Feinstein, who's on the Senate uh, Judiciary Committee. She's on the Intelligence, uh, intelligence uh, Committee. I mean, they, wear, they wear all these different hats. It's the same people over and over again. There's only like... Uh, 666 of them. Yeah, 666. Funny how that works out. Funny how that works out. And... Um, Leads me to believe that Iron Maiden has a little more substance in their songs if you look a little more deeply at their words, especially uh, uh, the uh, Edge of Tomorrow, I think it's called. Um, that's one of my favorites. So let's talk about Divest and Title in that song. If you listen to it, they, you know, Dickinson is actually a genius. Right, and I just love it because, you know, reading. Um, and knowing what all I've experienced and what I've learned and, and what I've come to uh, view as the evidence throughout all of these years, it was like I never experienced um, such as Dickinson's and the others until the last couple years. And this has been amazing to um, hear these new um uh, human beings that were always there that we never realized they were calling out to humanity metallica um you know the most profound is in unforgiven and it and it talks about that the human being has been labeled and unforgiven he's the debtor and that's what congress did in 1933 it claimed bankrupt status and said hey you guys are going to offset and discharge the bankruptcy for me and Roger Waters did the same thing, Pink Floyd. And you'll notice that the media came right in back in the 60s and 70s and said rock and roll was bad, bad, yeah. bad, 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 don't listen. And so they got all of our parents to disallow us listening to it while they were programming us through the educational industry to believe in their stuff rather than these angels that were actually calling to us for a very, very long time. John Lennon was one of them. Um, There's also uh, the one who wrote No Woman, No Cry, Bob Marley. And they really vilified him and called him a pothead and everything else. But in reality, they were the angels calling to us. Yeah, my favorite uh, recently is uh, Rush's uh, skit with the Canadian uh, Department of Collections Revenue Service. A guy shows up at their house there in the clouds, you know, and they just rake him over the coals. It's just, uh, I, I can't do any justice by talking about it. You got to see that. Well, you can find it on YouTube. Just uh, search up uh, Rush, Clockwork Angels, Intermission video, something like that, and they'll bring it up. Uh, CNN brings back those who were wrong on Iraq. Like it wasn't bad enough the first time, they got to bring these jokers back into the fray. Man. TV coverage of the current Iraq crisis looks a lot like 2003, when pro-war pundits, former generals, and hawkish politicians dominated the, the debate. CNN Situation Room, hosted by Wolf Blitzer, illustrates how TV has returned to that narrow pro-government discussion of Iraq. Oh my gosh, CNN is doing something to expose propaganda. That's amazing. Now you know it's Revelation. That's funny. Uh, That's pretty. Bit of good news here. Irish protesters force cancellation of distressed property auction. A property auction was canceled after members of the Land League organization carried out a peaceful protest ahead of a sale of what they described as mostly distressed properties. Bit of a victory there. Right, be careful and watch out for CIA Productions, because the League, anything, could be a part of the Federation. So you want to look and make sure that they're not just selling you something so that they can sell you another product later, after the judge comes back in to foreclose on those properties. It might be a presentation, I don't know yet, I haven't seen um, yeah. what that entity is. We've seen how the uh, courts like to wait to your guards down and just come in and take your stuff. You know, and let with, with a rubber down. stamp on the order, right. the cop says, We're going to rubber stamp from the judge right here. It says, I've got to shoot you if right. you protest. But to get you to let your guard down, they offer you groups and, and friendly folks that 
are not friendly. They're just there as human agents within mass and technology studying you and they know what you want to hear so they offer you what you want to hear friendly faces a group of friendly faces that tell you to litigate the heck out of this and and they'll be standing behind you while you redistribute all of your assets into the court process and we know a bunch of those people you know ted turner was one of the most extreme he was charging people for being a quote good guy and anti-government but he was having people charged he was getting people into court um, it's the same thing you know uh, lesser known is that Mike Rivera he's always telling people to sue them sue him going to court enter into that court process well he looks like a good guy he's a friendly face so you trust him you think he's nice but he's actually delivering you up to Satan sure he is now he's going back to um, Alex Jones's uh, network on GCN, I All guess, right. uh, sometime next month. There you go. Uh, you know, he, he's always at odds with uh, Alex Jones, but it was like uh, a false paradigm because, uh, you know, he say, well, you're blaming the Saudis and, and you know, it's, it's Israel and, and then it's neither one. It's kind of both are Congress. Right, but they'll <laughs> fight amongst themselves. And that's the funny part is that they've had an argument in the past. So they've taken the human mind all the way off of Congress and given the human mind different concepts. Oh, it's the Saudis. Oh, it's Israel. Oh, it's the Zionists. Whatever else they're pitting up against each other, they're using that to shift the focus. And look, again, folks, Saudi Arabia uh, is under uh, the, th the thumb of Congress since 1941. Israel, same thing. Alright? So, let's don't you know, let's don't play into that race card or uh, these Relief. divisions that are created by Congress to um, sidestep the issue um, and keep the heat off them. Right. Uh, it just never ends. Fran says no military intervention in Iraq without UN backing. Yeah. Okay, here we go again. UN, creation of Congress. Right. They're all the same entity. They want you to fund them in different funnels. That's what they are. They're different funnels or or arms of the same organization with their hands out. So in one arm you're going to put, you know, a hundred billion dollars to protect you this way, and in the other arm you're going to put ninety billion dollars to protect you that way. And all along it's the same wolf, and one of the arms is slaughtering you, while the other arms are there with their hand out called the UN, or with their hand out called the Red Cross, or with their hand out called the United uh, Way, or whatever other program these federal state has come up with. It's all the same thing. You have to shut it off at its root. Stop patronizing it. Stop asking it for rights and benefits. And surely, surely, stop paying it. Stop patronizing it and calling it your father. It's killing you. It's all the same thing. It's different departments and different divisions and different arms of the same beast. And to try to control the masses, here's a uh, story, a Canadian court to the entire world, no links for you. Supreme Court of British Columbia has ordered Google to remove entire domains from its search results, a decision that could have enormous global implications on free expression. Right, not just that, they're, they're promoting the indoctrination, they don't want their sheeple learning of the public law, they don't want their sheeple learning about all of these things. You have to put a stop to these things right now and do not let them censor because this is basing eugenics on the concept of education. It, that means that if you are not educated enough to know what this thing is doing, that you can be slaughtered. Do not do this to your brothers and sisters. You have a requirement to allow them the same knowledge that you are receiving at this time. This is the latest of several instances of courts exercising dangerous jurisdictional overreach where they have applied local laws to remove <coughs> content on the Internet. Now, uh, you talked about this one earlier. So... Uh, you probably don't need to read anything about it, but as many of you know, Casey Kasem passed at 82 here recently, 
And uh, let's just talk about uh, Casey Kasem here a little bit and uh, show the genocide unfolding before the, uh, you know, the world on uh, mainstream media. Right, and, and Casey Kasem, everybody loves Casey Kasem. Well, his daughter had come in as Judas in the court, and they had pit her and promised her money and everything else, and the judge made her conservator over that estate so that the judge and the attorneys could get him into an institutionalized state and kill him off. And now they're going to start redistributing Jean and the daughter, Carrie, again and again and again. But the first time they pit them, Jean had to come in and spend money on the attorneys to fight this. And Carrie came in and spent money on the attorneys to fight this, when in reality, nobody should have been involved in that estate. This is how they human traffic. You just watched. They took Genesis. the power out of Jean's hands, uh, gave it to the daughter, and the judge eventually uh, ruled by his, uh, uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm just, I'm. Um, he had consent of Carrie. That's all it took was consent of one of the parties, and that's why we teach what we teach: a quick claim deed, especially. And so uh, he ordered that uh, Casey be taken off his uh, feeding and water uh, tubes. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's an act of murder right in front of your eyes. Right in front of your eyes. And, and you need to start realizing these things because this is what happens to everybody. But they needed him dead so they could start redistributing his estate because they had to, all those funds were tied up. And dog, doggone it, gosh darn it, that... that Casey Kasem still being alive is getting in their way. Right, because Casey and Jean have a lot of money. Jean never contemplated the money. She is reported to be valued at $80 million. She has money. The attorneys wanted her money. The attorneys want Carrie's money. And to do that, they held Casey Kasem hostage by legal process. That is the action of piracy. That is the action of bail. That is ballism. They're worshiping Marduk. Yeah, when we say these courts are uh, courts of ball and uh, Marduk, we're not kidding. No, that is the action of ballism. They're holding Casey Casey hostage and then pitting the family members. So Carrie was pit up against Jean, and Jean's pit up against Carrie, and everybody's spending money on attorneys. Attorneys are cashing in through the action of piracy, they're just pirates. Yeah, you know, if you want to know more about, uh, you know, this this uh, perpetual act of genocide that, you know, and how, how the mechanism actually works, uh, go to my YouTube channel, Bonos Entertainment, and see the videos, everything you didn't want to know about the depopulation agenda. And I just put up part two recently, and it's all Tammy. Uh, taking you through the uh, documentation on the deal and uh, it's uh, I'm glad to see it's been getting a little bit of uh, uh, media coverage here on, on YouTube um, you know, good for my channel anyways but of course I'd like to see it in the hundreds of thousands or millions but I mean I mean, that's on that's up to you. I can only put out the videos. It's up to you to get them spread around there because uh, the mainstream media or YouTube's not going to help us. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, attorney gave uh, largest donation to judge in assault case. This is Nashville attorney Brian Lewis and his wife had contributed more than $8,500 to judicial candidates in the past eight years, but the family's largest contributors have been to the re-election this year of Judge Casey Moreland, who had intervened in a domestic assault case so Lewis's client could gain early release from jail. The client, national contractor David Chase, Return home to attack his girlfriend a second time on the same day, according to police. The case has drawn sharp criticism from police, domestic violence advocates, 
and lawmakers, some of whom have called on Moreland to step down. Moreland, who is running for re-election unopposed, has declined to resign. The deadline for opposing candidate to challenge him in the August 7th election passed in February. No names can be removed after this week because election officials must mail ballots to military personnel on Monday. Well, and this is a promotion effort. So what they're selling sure. you is domestic violence laws and telling you that it's okay for bankers to charge for use of your bodies. Rather than the community coming in and saying, oh my God, are you beating on your wife and removing the harm? You're allowing a banker to charge that guy for beating on his wife and renting out her body in the action of prostitution. Don't play into these things and read these stories with your discretion. And again, you need to start reacting. Are you going to continue renting human beings to each other, allowing the attorney to cash in, the prosecuting attorney to cash in on these things? Are you going to hold them accountable for prostitution and kidnapping, human trafficking, and genocide? Here, a bit of good news, um, perhaps, once again. Of course, we'll uh, uh, read through it here and see what we can see. I haven't read this one yet, actually. But uh, on its life, it... E News, uh, uh, I guess, is the website. Life, life site. Um, Valdosto, Georgia. Georgia abortionist Charles Rossman pled guilty this morning to the charge of criminal abortion. He was sentenced to a total of 10 years, with five to be served in prison and the remaining five to be served on probation. He was also fined $3,500. For murder. <laughs> yeah. Uh, another gospel-like abortionist has been convicted of crimes and is behind bars. This is a victory for justice, they're saying here. For the women Rossman preyed upon and for the innocent babies whose deaths from which Rossman profited, said Troy Newman. And Pres that the attorneys just cashed in on. Yeah, exactly. They just so it's not really that much of a victory, but no, no. I wanted to bring this one to light here because... And we all need to hold those attorneys accountable. The first time you get rid of it, you don't make abortion legal. This is what those attorneys have done. Murder is never, ever, 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 ever lawful. Never. But listen to this now. Rossman led authorities on a 11-year chase that spanned two continents. Finally, Rossman was captured by Interpol in Germany and returned to Laudas County, Georgia in January 2014, where he's been held without bond. According to sentence records, while he was a fugitive, Rossman had used the alias Boris Chernok. Case stemmed from an incident in 2003 when Rossman dispensed a handful of abortion pills to 23-year-old women who was beyond 30 weeks pregnant, oh. then coldly walked out of the office and locked the door, leaving the woman in labor and alone. How's that? After receiving a 911 call from the woman, police arrived and broke into Rossman's office in time to see her giving birth to a baby boy. Both required emergency hospital care. The case was particularly shocking due to the callous nature of Rossman's treatment of his patients and the advanced stage of her pregnancy. Unlike some states, such as New Mexico and Maryland, abortions that late in pregnancy are a crime in Georgia. Yeah, but she also wanted that at that date she was there to receive an abortion and she is not a victim do not victimize that female right the baby is a victim yeah it sure is that one's just kind of sad that's horrifying yeah and it's not really that much of a penalty the attorneys are still cashing in uh for murder, and you know, in reality, we need to just what, get rid of the harm. Yeah, what, whatever happened to their own manifest for government, an eye for an eye? That's in the Old Testament, right? Which manifest for government, right. I guess that it was only meant to apply to plebeians. Right. It's just... Not for politicians and, and attorneys. And doctors and these things that are doing these things. 
Pennsylvania man, 89, arrested on charges of aiding Nazi atrocities. Yeah, we came up with that one this week because what had happened was two times this week, um, the um, school system, the public school systems in the mainstream media were called prison camps. And it was realized that in the public school system in the United States Incorporated, there was something like 300,000 children have been restrained and held and, and chains and all sorts of stuff. Well, then what CNN did was they came out with this story to say this guy's been charged with Nazi crimes. But they were actually, they're trying to shift the, the um, eye away from the reality that this is the new Holocaust. Yeah. They're trying to pre present to you historical values and teach you there was a different Nazi Germany other than Congress coming in um, with Bayer, the Bayer Corporation came in to the Congressional Courts, the World Courts in 1927 and indemnified Poland. That was the quote Nazi Germany that no one saw. They didn't see that it was by judicial order that human beings were slaughtered. They didn't see that it was Congress who actually calls these things out. Vietnam was Congress, Japan, Germany, all of these things are Congress. And it happens because the human being becomes too great of a overhead to the corporate governance. So they call the population. Yeah, and I think all of this finger pointing from the attorneys back onto the cops now, uh, which we see rampant on policemisconduct.net, which is run by the Cato Institute, which is a bunch of attorneys. Right. They never tell you that the police are following policy laid down to them by the attorneys. Right. And uh, they're just saying, oh, look, see, look at all these bad cops. It's, it's, it's all them cops over there. It's, yeah, their fault. But they're not bad cops. It's the attorneys that are directing them to do these things. Right. Well, everybody has free will, too, though. This is the catch-22 on this. Right. And we know them for their work. And so I guess here's um, the latest from from policemisconduct.net, having said all of that. Opelika, Florida, the police sergeant has been accused of false imprisonment. He allegedly illegally handcuffed and detained a man at the police station after the man tried to file a complaint. Fair Bluff, North Carolina, a police officer faces several counts of secret peeping. Lake County, Illinois, a sheriff's lieutenant under fire for insubordination and misuse of county electronic devices will keep his job despite the boss's attempt to fire him, but he will be demoted under the disciplinary ruling. Honesdale, Pennsylvania, a police officer who works for departments in Jessup and Honesdale was arrested after officers said he crashed into several parked cars. The officer refused to submit to a blood test, according to officers, and was charged with DUI and reckless driving. Uh, update on Cherokee County, South Carolina, first reported January 28th. A now former deputy facing federal corruption charges pleading guilty. Uh, the sheriff says the deputy is accused of acquiring electronic gambling machines and selling them for personal gain rather than turning them in as contraband. Oh, he's not supposed to make any money, but the local community is supposed to be. Prosecuting attorney wants his cut before the law enforcement gets their cut. That's all that is, is yeah. crimes under the laws of revenue. So that prosecuting attorney needs to be arrested by law enforcement immediately. Right, I would say. Update also on Douglasville, Georgia, first reported um, in August of 2013, now former officer entered a guilty plea on driving under the influence charges and will serve three days in jail, pay a fine, and lose his license for a year. Yeah, a little slap on the wrist there. Yeah, he'll be put on foot duty. Just can't drive a police car. I wonder how they deal with that kind of situation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see, Ewing, New Jersey, a city woman received a $155,000 settlement after she was allegedly beaten by township officers. And again, prosecuting attorney is the one that directed it. Go after the prosecuting attorney and the corporate counsel attorney there. Exactly. 
update in Little Rock, Little Rock, Arkansas, previously reported in uh, October of 2013. Now, a former police officer has been convicted on one of five charges related to his escorting a van while on duty. Prosecutors say the officer thought the van was carrying marijuana. So, he went after him. It said that the local community there was transporting drugs, and the cop was escorting it. And he's the one that's under fire. I don't think so. They're drug trafficking, and he, he was going to call them out on it. So everybody needs to protect this human being, this officer. Let me uh, yes, pull this entire story up here. Um, the Arkansas Democrat... Gazette reports that the jury found Randall Robinson guilty Wednesday of lying to investigators. He was acquitted on other charges that include conspiracy to distribute marijuana, attempting to possess marijuana with the intent to distribute, and failing to report a crime. Prosecutor said Robinson's half-brother, former officer Mark Jones, helped arrange the escort of the van. Yes. The van was, was actually part of an undercover FBI investigation. Right, and it was the community. It was the corporate counsel attorneys. That's who the drug cartels are with. Corporate counsel. Robinson's attorney said Robinson was asked by Jones to follow the van but did not know it was supposedly carrying drugs. Right. And he didn't. He was just escorting it as law enforcement. Law enforcement thinks that they're doing a good job. Update on Warren, Ohio. First reported in May. 2014, officer pled guilty to, no, pled not guilty to grand theft, theft in office, and breaking and entering. He is accused of stealing a car from the locked garage of a vacant home by having it towed to a garage over which he had control, or which he has had control. That just doesn't make sense, does it? Kind of a crazy one. I'll have to look more into that and um, update on it if I find any updates. Let's see, um, I can pull up the whole story here, and uh, as soon as we fight through all the advertisements, former Warren Patrolman Reuben Shaw had handcuffs placed on his wrist and police officers escorting him Wednesday in Trumbull County Common Pleas Court. Shaw, 48, after pleading not guilty to grand theft theft in office and breaking and entering was taken in handcuffs to Trumbull County Clerk of Court's office to make arrangements to post the $2,500 bond set by Judge Peter Contos. Shaw is charged with three felony offenses and two misdemeanor charges accusing of stealing a 1969 Chevrolet Nova from the locked garage of a vacant home on Kentwood Drive Southwest in June 2013 by having it towed to a garage over which he has control. Right, but see, the thing is, is that that was probably one of those foreclosures, and it was the judge that directed the removal of the vehicle. And so the bankers just cashed in, and now they're charging law enforcement for doing their jobs. That's what he was directed to do by corporate counsel. Wow, it's just horrible how they're rolling on these cops. Yeah, they're, we got to protect each other. These law enforcement officers are innocent. All he did was went out and he was law enforcing, believing that that order from the judge was a lawful one. It wasn't. It was corporate counsel cashing in on everybody's demise, and now they're turning on the same law enforcement that they were using to do those things. We know that law enforcement is not guilty. We know by the evidence that they've done no harm. Please. This is corporate counsel doing these things. Yeah, let's see. Um, this is interesting. Let's see. Uh, Police Chief Eric Merkel fired Shaw, a 24-year veteran, May 2nd, after an investigation by the Ohio Bureau of Criminal Investigation. Right. Several pastors FBI. who are part of the Trumbull County Inter denominational ministerial alliance yep. and several others spoke after the hearing to question the fairness of Shaw's firing and cha charges. Yeah. The Reverend Philip Chalet, pastor of Greater Apostolic Faith Church in yeah, Warren. Don't, don't believe that these guys are good guys. They're putting on a show. I know, I know. It said the group of about a dozen men 
had come to court Wednesday to make sure justice is served and that there is equal action for everybody and to make sure justice is served. No, you have to protect that law enforcement officer. Are these, are these like the judge's on. buddies coming yes. in there to help, uh, you know, set, set consensus reality? Right, and turn them on. That's what their job is. A priest is a psychiatrist. Reverend Mr. Sheely said he and others have questions as to why Shaw was fired and charged yeah. criminally when a lot of cases involving other Warren police officers were much worse, they didn't say more that severe. He's not guilty. See, they're not saying that he's not guilty. Than what we're doing with right now, and all they amounted to, pretty much, was a slap on the hand with those officers, and they got their job back. See, and, and the, some got promotions. And those are the bad guys, the the detectives and the FBI agents. Those are bad guys. They're rolling on law enforcement. Sure seems like it. Well, we're trying really hard to protect law enforcement. You know, this is this is the same choice that that you're giving. Are you going to deliver Jesus up, or are you going to put Barabbas on that cross? Because if you allow this law enforcement officer just out doing his job to go on that cross when he's done nothing wrong, he never did any harm with intent. He did not know that he was acting on an unlawful order. He's innocent. And we are to protect the innocent. Well, they need to start questioning these orders that have a stamp on it. Right. They're, and they're all this way. They yeah. just, the, the, the sheriff's office has a stamper, right. and, the, and, and the lady there in the office will just stamp it, right. you know, and, there's, and, all and they call that a signature. Things, and all of these colorful things, that's what it is, it's color of law. All of these colorful things. We've seen it firsthand, things. haven't we? Yep, shiny things and six inches of paperwork to make it look like it's important. That's not important. It's six more inches of garbage. Six more inches of uh, paper, um, you know. Um, forest destruction. Yeah, forest destruction by attorneys. Um, Seattle, a King County Sheriff's Office deputy was arrested Thursday on suspicion of helping his wife start a prostitution business as well as stealing ammunition from the sheriff's office firing range and dabbling in a number of illegal drugs. He didn't ever do anything wrong. Okay, so his wife wants to be a prostitute. She wants to make money using her body, and the federal government is coming in and saying, no, you're not allowed to make money on your body. Only we can. They're charging a guy for rent on his own wife's body. That's why they're charging him. They are being prostitutes and charging him with prostitution. This is ridiculous. Seattle resident Darian Hoylewell, 49, is being held in King County Jail on $150,000 bail. He has been with the Sheriff's Office since 1995 and was a member of the department SWAT unit and chief firearms instructor until his arrest. According to the charges filed Thursday in King County Superior, Hoylewell has been violating the public trust and the law for years with the charging documents stating he displays a high level of disdain for the very law he is sworn to uphold. Good. He doesn't like acts of commerce and private acts. And here's That's a good law enforcement officer. He's enforcing God's law, the truth. When here's a note that the attorneys make on this story. Note that the corruption was not exposed by an internal affairs investigation. It came to light during divorce proceedings, and the divorce happened because Hoylewell slept with a friend uh, yeah, of his then wife. Yeah, they're trying to vilify him. He's a bad guy because he slept around. What if he and his wife agreed to those things? Well, it sounded like that very well could have been the case if, right. if she was yeah, she wanting had, to become... Right, she enjoyed sex. It's not unlawful for her to enjoy sex. And to make money having sex, that's not unlawful. That's her body. Here's some more of uh, what the attorney said. Had the corrupt officer only stayed away from his wife's closest friend, it seems like the corruption would have persisted for yeah, many more years. These attorneys are trying to vilify this officer, but he's never done any harm. Yep. We yeah, cannot just, allow these things to occur anymore. It's just all about the attorney wanting to cash in every which way but lose and... And sheep will go along with it and say, yep, we need you to protect us. We sure do. And, and the sheep that are agreeing with, the, with prostitution, she enjoys. That's her body. She should be making money on her body if she wants to. 
A judge should not be cashing in on her body. That's yeah. her body. These yeah. things, these concepts that you were sold by the religious indoctrination are absolutely disgusting. They taught you that you're bad to have sex. You are biology. You have a vagina and a penis for a reason. Those things are for you to have sex. You reproduce. Of course, uh, let's see. Um, let's see. Uh, this video here, I was kind of disappointed this didn't receive too much attention here. Um, but it illustrates the uh, callous nature of these uh, quote-unquote uh, authorities and in governmental institutions like this substance abuse counselor she was DWI while victim dying on the windshield that one remember that absolutely one absolutely horrifying it's nightmarish that a psychopath could act in such manners and the media would attempt to portray another human being as a dehumanized object yeah she drove two miles through the city of Torrance before other motorists swarmed her car at a traffic light and kept her there until police arrived. Moreno was taken to the hospital where she died. Where just, where he died. And just, and yeah, and and right, through uh, the uh, course of the story you see where the, in court they try to make up look well he was just a homeless man. Yeah, and drunk. And dehumanizing yeah. him. Just vilifying uh, right him. out of the eight stages of genocide. Right, but that's not right at all. No, he was it's not. a human being that was murdered callously. And I put this up um I think about a week ago, uh, only 190 people viewed it. It's kind of weird. Um, yeah, they don't like the truth. They, yeah, they want the easier to believe, more entertaining, easier to swallow truth. Yeah. Uh, you know. Revelation 10. Like, well, of course, Dean Clever, the site administrator, quits. You know, they, they all flock to that one. Yeah, because they don't care about Dean Clever being crucified. Hello, he's never done any harm. I haven't seen evidence yet. I asked for evidence last week, and nobody's come forward with any evidence to tell me that Dean Clifford has ever harmed a human being. It's non-existent. And so at this time, he's Jesus. He's being crucified. And sheeple are being entertained by this. They're making a decision. The time is now... That everybody has to wake up. They're, they're cannibalizing the stars like never before, um, injuring them and releasing them to yes, make that more. Was, uh, that was a pit maneuver on the um, the limo that Tracy Morgan was in. I guess he's doing much better. He's uh, going Thank now goodness. moved to a rehab place. So. And rehab's the worst thing because he's I know it. in his thought and. And that, that's what physical therapy is, and, and especially speech therapy. The speech therapists are trained psychiatrists to alter your mindset. Uh, let's see here. In a, uh, another situation, Mike Sorrentino arrested in tanning salon brawl. Uh, this that was a uh, result of uh, a brawl with his brother, I believe. Let's see, as I recall. Let's see, the situation... Sorrentino is giving his moniker a legal spin. The Jersey Shore alum was arrested Thursday after a brawl at a New Jersey tanning salon he owns with his family. Uh, it, at approximately 2.10 p.m., our officers responded to a 911 call at the Boca tanning salon and referred to a fight in progress, Milton Police Detective Lieutenant Stephen Dollinger told the Times. The cause of the argument was unknown, he said, adding that the other man was not arrested. Both he and Sorrentino sustained minor injuries. Upon arrival, the officers arrested Mike Sorrentino for simple assault. He was right. pr but processed were, and released after posting $500 bail. These were family members. So if you look in, family means race. Family means you're of the same race. So if you were arguing, look at any other biology, and lions do this, the males, they fight. They love fighting. That's part of their competition. Not in an aggressive manner, but they're, you know, physically they're playing with each other, just like any other biology. Lions and bears and wolves 
all all other biology, the male exercises his his physique and exercises himself, and he plays. And so it doesn't say who who made the nine one one call. No. But it sounds like somebody just uh, uh, played played informant that maybe right. one of the other patrons there, you know, getting a suntan. Right, and and that's the saddest thing is because you know if there's a competition within a. Uh, hierarchy, a family model, the the father and the son, or maybe an uncle and a nephew or whatever, they're going to duke it out. You know, well, I'm pissed off at you, you're pissed off at me, and they're going to take care of it themselves. Let's see. Science. They don't need to be charged by a banker. Well, here, let's see. Um, Simon told police that Brickle had slapped him, and then he shoved her, called 911, the court said. It all went down in a cottage on their property that functions as a recording studio. That was another incident, I see. Right. Um, but, yeah, it says here at the end, we're fine, we love each other, we're fine, we there had an go. argument, it's over. There you go. And they took care of it themselves, but the state... Oh, wait a minute, I, I'm getting my stories mixed up here now. Somehow I got to... Uh, Paul Simon. This is Paul Simon. Oh, and Eddie Brickle, and Brickle, domestic okay. dispute. Okay, for some reason Same the page the page flipped. or. Well, and that's not relative to our biology. Now, if a male is beating on a female or vice versa, if it's a different well, sex, then they're in competition wrongfully because, you know, males are much larger than we are and everything else. But m normally what that occurrence was was not domestic violence, but something that was going on within that family dynamic. And a lot of the times what needs to happen is just community involvement. Is he beating on his wife? Um, what did, you know, did she do something? Blah, blah, blah. Under public law, if there's no intent to harm, you know, if it's, I don't know. Well, anyways, the Paul Simon A. Briscoe domestic dispute case, it was dropped. Right. So. Because they just uh, took it on the cheeks. But, you know, that that's something that otherwise concerns me. Because, you know, manhandling a female because you don't get your way or manhandling a male because you don't get your way is intent to harm. It's not an intent to, um, you know, have, have an argument between two males or two females. Two females uh, often argue on other biologies as well and they raise their voices and, and growl louder and, and all sorts of stuff but it's relative to their biology nobody should be charging for rent on anybody's body and calling that injury when it's they're dealing with it if it if they were evidencing something else no I don't want to deal with this they wouldn't be there in that location fighting they're evidencing that they're in competition it's just competition and government, any kind of state charging for something like that is absolutely appalling. You know, if you see uh, you know, within the genders, hardcore violence, the female beating on him, the male beating on her, and there's threats of, of death, the community is required to step in and stop that from occurring. And that means removal of the harm, regardless of whatever gender it is. Because a lot of the time, and including um, the UN report on human trafficking of 2009, it, it relates the female as the main perpetrator of abuse against both females and males. So you need to use your discretion. And if there's a violent female amongst you, you need to get rid of it. Put it somewhere else. Oh, that Stephen, uh, or Stephen Mullins, or... Uh Goodness, I can't pronounce his last name correctly. Molux, it looks like. Probably pronounced Molau, but um, he did a, a very good review of the new Maleficent movie here with Angelina Jolie. And I guess they're just really pushing the uh, female propaganda in that one. Right. Yeah. You need to use probably, always your discretion. Probably not using the. Probably not doing that review of a review very much justice but uh and catch that uh probably just by searching Melisfant movie review and answer jolene uh, she's just such a uh un lap dog and all that it's just disgusting 
you know, get get and her, her dad get her, too. Her dad's higher up on the media chain as well. Get her breast chopped off and then promote that as good things. So all these women are getting all their breasts chopped off preemptively. It's crazy. Right. Um, let's see here. Coco.com police uh, caregiver arrested in assault of paralyzed man. Sick. Uh, let's see. Arrested in assault of victim's brother with belt. Let's see here. Investigator said the paralyzed man's brother called police to the 6500 block of Saddleback Drive Wednesday around 9.30 p.m. According to officers, say Bonnie Shirley Davis, 48, dumped her paralyzed patient out of his wheelchair while screaming at him for unknown reasons. Police said Davis is the victim's evening caregiver. According to officers, Davis attacked the victim's brother with Lysol, a Lysol can, and belt when he was helping his brother get back into his wheelchair. That's sick. Police said Davis later cursed a paralyzed man who also can't communicate due to a car wreck and dumped him out of his wheelchair a second time because he was in Davis's way. Both victims suffered minor injuries. Davis was arrested on complaints of aggravated assault with battery. Well, that's attempted murder always because that's intentional malicious harm upon one of the most um, innocent victims of our society. He's as a child in a paralyzed state and he requires our intervention as humans to make sure that he's not being abused and that that harm, that threat to him, treating a child in that manner is removed from ability to harm. Not just charged with little things, misdemeanor, this or that. She's to be charged with something that keeps her in prison or puts her in an institutionalized state and gets her out of the way of harm. And that was Oklahoma, by the way. Just uh, as a side note there. And uh, let's see here. Got to be something uh, good to close this out with over on the world scene here. I'm i um, spent a lot of time on United States Incorporated stuff, but it's all United States Incorporated globally, if you want the bigger picture. Uh, let's see here. What's blacklisted news got? Ah, uh, yeah, I know there's a CIA front too, but, you know, <laughs> most of our news is, so we just got to be able to discern what we're reading. Right. Syria and the crosshairs. Obama confirms airstrike will not be limited to Iraq. One year ago, the Obama administration was doing their very best to build up public support for U.S. military intervention in Syria. Even though that attempt failed, no one who has been following this crisis closely believed for a moment that this was the end. They would regroup and try again from another angle. So, by him saying that uh, airstrikes not limited to Iraq, you know, he could be going after... Good old Assad there, and I'm I'm reminded of that picture of uh, Assad and uh, Carrie having a nice dinner together with their wives, you know, and they're all one big happy family. Right. That was from 2008, I believe. Right. And it's always what happened? Oh, the marketing conditions changed. Oh, sorry, we're gonna have to raise some of your people, Assad. Um, you know. Well, how many do you need? Are you gonna bond this or something? What are you gonna give me in exchange for my humans? Exactly. And that's what a treaty is. It's an agreement between those two banks. Buying up the planet out of control central banks on a corporate buying spree. Uh, U.S. Federal Reserve bought up 80% stake in American international group AIG in September 2008. Unprecedented $85 billion outlaw outlay was justified as necessary to bail out the world's largest insurance company. Mm -hmm. Today, however, central banks are on a global corporate buying spree, not to bail out bankrupt corporations, but simply as an investment to compensate for the loss of bond income due to record low interest rates. Indeed, central banks have become some of the world's largest stock investors. Right. Well, that's all changing, and everybody will see that within the next month. It'll be something that will be exciting, better than those fireworks that are planned to celebrate your pending state. Oh my gosh, you know, they're starting already with the fireworks around here. You know, <laughs> you know, it's it's just like them uh, uh, the, them hillsbillies. 
It's in Hillsbillies again. Yeah, we got to celebrate the 4th of July, even though it's like not for another three weeks yet. We're just going to keep celebrating every day by buying these Chinese fireworks and setting them off in the neighborhood. Well, and that, that in itself is an advertisement to other human beings who don't really celebrate these holidays. But it's their neighbors that convince them to celebrate these things. And it's those neighbors that are advertising for the United States Incorporated. You might want to stop doing that because that's part of delivering them up. Some bailed out banks don't have to make good on the money. They still owe us taxpayers. Maryland Financial Bank, one of six banks including the government's auction this week of stakes. Uh, it received as part of its crisis era bailout program mm -hmm. enjoys an unusual luxury it doesn't have to make good on the money it still owes taxpayers right and, and, it, and that's it, back it to the 14th in, amendment again right it cashed in the first time the second time the third time up to the 16th time and now it's saying oh well maybe we should spank it just one time no 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 honey there's a lien on all their assets and they're going to be spanked a whole bunch of times until they learn never ever to touch human being again. Yeah. It's coming down. I mean, um, you see all kinds of, uh, you know, and I, when I read this headline again, uh, you know, uh, Oxford Deputy City Clerk indicted for embezzlement. Okay. Uh, this is um, Oxford, Mississippi Deputy Clerk indicted on one count of embezzlement released on a five thousand dollar bond Lisa Diggins and um, you know let's see she's accused of embezzling twelve thousand seven hundred three dollars this is a fall guy you know I mean this is chump change to what's really going on and, and it, but but they used the word indictment again now with the bombing, you know, hot water he's in, you know, Congress is ready to, to uh, you know, go forward with an impeachment proceedings. Okay, that's, that's because the Congress is buddies with uh, uh, Obama. Obama. They, don't don't wanna, they don't want to indict him. They want to impeach him so he can, you know, actually just go in vacation uh, the rest of his life, right. you know. They'll put him as a leader of another country and change his name. You got to indict. You can't. Brown, Don't buy it? into this impeachment mantra that's thrown up by all these uh, patriots and mainstream media alike. You know, if it ain't right, you got to indict. And I think it's about time for a break. We're going to play some Black Betty. Break? Let's see. That's the end of our two hours. Oh, yeah. That is the end of our two hours. Oh, I guess we're going to see you all. You had a long night, so I'm sure you want to get on out. Sorry, You'll yeah. be back tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Tonight, according to GMT. 6 to 8 Eastern Standard Time. I don't know the GMT uh, equivalent to that. Yep, same thing on Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com or you can listen through the player at TammyPepperman.org. Yeah, because you're going to simulcast right here, right? Right. I'll be All right, right here at TammyPepperman.org. So, awesome. Waters Radio. So that'll be awesome. And then... Um, yeah, we'll see. We might have a surprise for everybody tomorrow. I'm expecting one, but you know how that goes. All right, folks. Well, thanks for listening to the Public Law. Be well, and we'll catch you soon.